Come on in, come on in. Share this with somebody right now. All right, all right. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Real News Talk today with Pastor Robert. This is Pastor Robert L. Carver II, and I'm so glad that you've joined us again for another podcast right here on Spotify and on the RCTV network on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. For those of you on social media, go ahead and share this. Give me some likes. Give me some love. Subscribe. Do all that good stuff. We've got a great uh, interview and time scheduled for you today. And, uh, you know, I, as you see behind me, I'm coming from Tampa, Florida, one of the most beautiful places in the world. However, our guest today is coming to us from California on the left coast, the west coast. And so we're going to see who has the best weather. They say it doesn't rain in Southern California. Well, you know, it rains here in Florida. But anyway, we're so glad that we have her. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to introduce to you now Miss Dion L. Brown. All right, all right, all right. Let's say it then. All right, now let me tell you about Dion Brown. How you doing, Miss Brown? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, or should I say Missionary Brown, Sister Brown, Evangelist Brown? <laughs> Which one of those? Sister Brown. Sister Brown. <laughs> Sister Brown all right, all right. Uh, Sister Dion Brown, her, her Twitter profile says, a music ministry that will quench the thirsty soul and touch the hearts of many. Miss Dion, Sister Dion is truly anointed to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, all the way from Ontario, California. All right, so glad yeah. to have you. Thank now, Dion, you. tell me, I, I, you've been a friend of mine on uh, Twitter and Instagram and all like that for quite some time, uh, but this is our first time really having a conversation. Yes. How long have you been on Twitter? Man, probably over 10 years. Okay, you know, I I'm think? looking here since March 2009. Oh, okay, been well over 10 years. <laughs> Woo, yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. I went I mean, from MySpace to Twitter, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh so my space <laughs> yeah you tell your age you tell your age yes, yes i remember my space tom remember tom yeah yes tom never, tom never removed anybody never deleted anybody never censored anybody but never put know, him in jail yeah, that's right that's right never uh shadow ban them not like Nothing. twitter does but anyway <laughs> but we're so Facebook. glad to have you. Uh, what'd Thank you say you so I said Twitter and oh, Facebook will put us on lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm 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 just waiting. You know, it's amazing because uh I see you have three thousand that you're following, twenty three hundred, almost twenty four hundred followers. I'm I'm around five thousand, something like that. But nobody sees my tweets. I've been I've been shadow banned for about four or five years on Twitter. Oh wow. Yeah. And actually wow. even on YouTube, where some of you may be viewing this, I have actually nineteen thousand one hundred subscribers on YouTube. Wow. That's excellent. But I'm being shadow banned because I can post a video on YouTube, and if I get 10 views, now imagine it sends out the notifications to 19,000. Right. Right. So st statistically, you know, uh, you should get at least get 100, no, 5, 10. So, you know, it is what it is. Wow. But uh, thank God, thank God we found you, and we always are moved and blessed by your uh, your tweets and your Instagram posts. And so I want to tell you that you 
or a blessing, even some time when you just kind of randomly posted thoughts, you know, <laughs> you, you never know. So anyway, Dion, if you can tell us a little bit about where you're from and your upbringing and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll start from the beginning. I was born in Mobile, Alabama, but raised in Southern California. Yeah. I was there for just six months. And then my my parents moved to LA, Los Angeles, California. Okay. And I was there for like 13 years and we moved to Ontario. Well, actually moved to a little city called Redlands, which is now a big city. But um, I've been in the Inland Empire probably, man, over 30 years now. So okay. I reside in Ontario, California, which is a lovely, very beautiful area. I live right, my drive home every day from work, I, all I see is the mountaintops, the San Bernardino Mountains. Wow. And that's exactly what I pray for. I said, Lord, I want to live where I can see these mountains every single day. And it's the most beautiful sight ever. So, wow. yeah, th that's pretty much me as far as, like, you know, answering your question. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I love California. And right now it is a beautiful sunny day. I got up, made a quick run to Starbucks at 830. And it was already, like, 89 degrees. It's too mm -hmm. hot. Too early to be this uh, hot. <laughs> and they said uh, we're going to be in the triple digits up until Sunday. Oh, y'all got to have a heat wave then, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I got the windows sweet, open sweet. right now, but probably in another 40 minutes, I'll be turning on the air conditioning. Well, I understand what you mean because uh, <laughs> you turn in the air conditioning on and you have the windows open. Understand, I... I got the air conditioning on already. It's 92 <laughs> degrees right now here oh, in wow. Tampa, Florida. Oh, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So you understand. Praise the Lord. But this, this is still God's country. Now, is Ontario, you said the valley, is it near San Bernardino Valley, that area? Ontario is in San Bernardino County. I'm literally okay. like 25 minutes away from Los Angeles, 25 minutes away, well, 30 minutes away from Palm Springs, about 25 minutes away from Orange County. So I'm like right on the cusp of everything. Okay. And that's okay, why okay. I chose it because. Sometimes I do go to L.A. for ministry. Some I, At one point, I was going to Orange County for work, and then I have family more towards Palm Springs. So it was kind of put me right on the border of everything, which is a good place to be. Okay. 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 So an Alabama girl, the California, in the mountains. Yes. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> that, that is a beautiful sight. When I've been there, I mean, I'm just like, wow. Uh, and, and the thing I also like about that, that area, too, is uh, – when I'm out there, I have no problem with my allergies and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Now, yeah, now here and you, I mean, we got all that good stuff. We have our moments when you might get those winds that'll pick up and you get those allergies to kick in. I didn't have allergies until probably ten years ago, but they're not bad for me. Okay, I might get okay. maybe a, a sneeze here and there, but I know some people that when these winds blow out here, mm -hmm. they have to stay inside the house. But it's it's like even today, like I said, it's just a beautiful day. I don't have much of a breeze, but, you know, it's good right now until that heat really does start kicking in. But it's a beautiful okay. day, and it's been beautiful these last couple of weeks. That's good. That's good. Now, uh, I was now tell me about your church church background, growing up church-wise, or did you grow up in church and all that? I grew up in church. I used to always say this before I really got saved, that I was in the church, but the church wasn't in me. You know, when okay. you're kids, you got to go because your parents take you. So, <laughs> I mean, I have, I know people from when I was like two years old that told me that, you know, when my mom and my dad first moved out here, we went to um, a Kojic church in Los Angeles. And then from there, we transitioned to a Baptist church. And I've been in Baptist church all my life, but I love Kojic. I'm not going to okay. lie. I love the church of God in Christ. Turns yes. out that my grandfather, my mother's father was a Kojic pastor. And I never wow. knew this, never knew this. And when my uncle died, probably like 15 years ago, one of my mom's old friends, she shared the story with me about my grandfather who didn't read, he couldn't read, but he was able to have someone teach him to read the Bible. And mm -hmm. that's how mm -hmm. he learned to read, by reading the Bible. That's how he learned to preach the word of God, even though he couldn't read, he normally couldn't read because he didn't have the education. But wow. I mean, to find out that, you know, like I said, I just have this love for it. I love the structure of Church of God in Christ. I love, I just, I, I love it. I've always had. Mm -hmm. But just to find out that I actually was born in. <laughs> yeah, you're born in. You know you're born in. <laughs> I was born in. 
that was like, wow, you know, but I've been in church all my life. And I can honestly okay, say yeah. now church is in me. I mean, I had originally probably maybe around April, I had resigned from the church that I was attending. Mm-hmm. And, you know, no one did anything to me. There was no church hurt. I let myself get in the way of my spiritual blessings. Okay. So, and I had visited other churches, but it just didn't feel like home. Mm-hmm. So I'm now back with my original church, um, Promises of God Christian Cathedral, and that's in the city of San Bernardino. Um, uh-huh. Bishop Marquis Smith is my pastor. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've been in church all my life, and I it just, I don't know, you just don't feel right, or you don't feel the same when you are not there. Unless you're, unless I'm sick, I'm I'm generally right. at church. Yeah, and, and that and that's one thing I did notice. Uh, now that you 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 your church baby like 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 some of us are, you know. Uh, you were saying how you parent, you know, you went to church because you basically had to because your parents went. You know, my right. parents never had to make me go to church. I just had a love for it. And being being raised classic with a cost a lot of times, you know, mm-hmm. we got all the little rules we can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. But right. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed <laughs> it. I enjoyed it. Now, now, so so that's good. Now your your ministry, you have a music ministry. Now tell us about that because um I know you can say. I have been singing all my life. I used to hold talent shows on my porch when we lived in L.A. All the kids would come over. I would sing. Somebody would dance. Somebody might tell jokes. But that was the standing. I think every Saturday afternoon, go to Dee Dee's house, because that's my little nickname. Go to Dee Dee's mm-hmm. house for the talent show. <laughs> uh-huh. So I've been singing <laughs> since I could probably open my mouth. I mean, I got my first record player when I was... I think maybe six or seven. I think my first record, <laughs> I might have been probably seven or eight. I take it back because my first record was at Tina Marie, T, was it Tina Marie Square Biz. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. And I would play that thing to death. And I sang in the children's choir, the teen choir, the young adult choir, the mass choir, all simultane- simultaneously because that's mm-hmm. what I love to do. I mm-hmm. love, I love to sing. And mm-hmm. I started realizing that I could write, you know, write songs and melodies would come. I'm not an instrumentalist. I can't play, but I can definitely mm-hmm. get a melody in my head and sing it well enough for someone to pick it up and start playing. It. Okay. So, okay, praise and, God. yeah. And back in 2008, I did an EP about five songs and it is still on iTunes. I really need to get back into, I let other things get in the way, but I really need to get back into my writing and getting something else out there because I love music. I love right. singing God's praises. Um, that's just who I am. And like I said, there was a, a, a time when I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. And you can really feel when you're getting off track and you're yeah. missing out on what, you know, what thus says the Lord. So, but yeah, I, I just love music and I just been singing all my life. And that's, I thank God for the gift. I thank God for the talent. And at this point, at this stage in the game, I'm just asking him to use me. I'm available. Use me. Amen. Amen. Now, Sister Dion, now, what, are you an alto, soprano, contralto? What's your voice? I'm a in, mezzo. In, in I, can, I, I can sing them all, but I am a soprano. Soprano, soprano. Okay. Mezzo, soprano. Yes. Okay. Now, before before we end this uh, broadcast, you're going to have to do about 15 seconds or something now. <laughs> okay. Now, just, just, just a little teaspoon of something, aca, acapulco. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Uh, we, want, we want to be blessed by your music ministry. And when we come back after this commercial break, we're going to talk about the testimony that you have. Um, you posted on Twitter at a couple last week sometime, and I was like, wait, did I miss something? Because I, I keep up with your tweets. And so uh, we're right as we come this commercial break. We're going to let you tell this incredible testimony of what God just did in your life. We'll be right Amen. back. All right, we're going to cut that out right here, and then we're going to put on this. Um, let me see. Let me do it like this. I'll edit all this part be, uh, This part out. Let's go. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, where are we? There we go. Join Pastor Robert on Real News Talk today on Spotify. 
go to the Spotify app. Then click Podcast New Releases. Type in Real News Talk Today in the search bar. Click Podcast and Shows. Scroll down until you see the icon of Real News Talk Today with Pastor Robert and click it. Click the follow button and then also click the bell so you can be notified of new podcasts. Then you're ready to join Pastor Robert L. Carpenter II for news, cultural talk, controversial subjects, and special guest interviews on Real News Talk Today on Spotify. Let's go. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that little break there. And we're so glad we are here. We are here talking to Sister Dion Brown all the way from Ontario, California. She has a music ministry, and she's blessed, about to bless us with her testimony. Uh, last week, I believe it was, I was on Twitter just kind of uh, uh, perusing, and we see, let me put your Twitter uh, uh name on here so people can uh, if they want to add you or join you and those of you listening on the podcast her Twitter is she's at she's Dion Brown Dion with two ends in the E at yeah. she's Dion Brown and you can you should, you'll be blessed by her tweets um now you don't need to know what my tweet my tweet Twitter thing is because <laughs> you may not be blessed with what I tweet praise the Lord so we just gonna leave that right there <laughs> I'm surprised she still followed me. But anyway, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Always tell, tell me, when you come to my Twitter, you might want to have a use a little discretion and, 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 and five. But anyway, <laughs> but we, we were on Twitter. Y'all just pray for me. Just pray for me, Dion. Just yes. pray for me. Just make it for me and and, 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 and buke, buke that spirit. Buke it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Oh, okay, let me. <laughs> all right. You're all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we are now. But I was uh, perusing Twitter as I do sometimes, and um, should have been doing something else. And and I saw that, and I said, and she said, I can't remember what the tweet was, but basically you were saying you're recovering from something, or while you were home, uh, recovering. I was like, wait, did I miss something? And so then I DM'd you to find out what was going on. And I said, oh, you, you got to tell this. I didn't I didn't even get the whole story because I knew uh, that God had done something mighty. Uh, mm. and so I, if you go ahead and just take a few minutes and take your time and tell us about what God did for you, what happened to you, and how God brought you out and is bringing you out. Amen. Amen. Well, this happened back on June 25th. I was getting ready to go out with some of my girlfriends to go see Maverick, the Tom Cruise sequel to, I can't even think of the name of the movie, but the sequel, Top Top Gun, there we go. Um, And as usual, I'm, you know, putting on makeup, I'm curling my hair and whatnot. And I, and I hope this, this is just me. I'm just going to be honest with everything I say. I'm very transparent. I do Mm -hmm. not like public restrooms, so I do everything I need to do before I go. (laughs) So, I am in the restroom and all of a sudden this headache just overwhelmed me. And I always try to describe it like back in the day when you see those cartoons where they do the explosion and you just see layers and layers of the explosion. That's what Mm -hmm. my head felt like. It started like probably in the center and worked its way around and then back around again. And while I'm there having this headache, I'm just pleading the blood of Jesus because I have never felt anything like that before in my life. I'm mm-hmm. not prone to headaches. I don't get them normally. I'm, I think I'm, I won't say I'm the rare breed, whereas other people might get a headache once a month or twice a month. I don't get them. I just don't, okay. they don't come okay. to me. Thank God. But this was something that was totally unusual. So that headache did, it did subside. Um, I went to my phone and my vision was like terribly blurred. I could see everything in triplicate. I was able to call Kaiser Hospital and speak to the nurse advice line. They suggested I call 911. I called my stepfather who's a retired nurse and told him what was going on and thinking that he might be close enough to me that he can come get me. He told me, even if I was close, I still want you to call 911. So I called 911. 
Um, they told me to unlock the door and just sit in the living room, which is some, which is what I did. And within a matter of minutes, they were knocking at my door. They got me to the hospital. And by then, you know, the headache was gone. The vision was clear again. But because I've never felt that before, I didn't want to take a chance. So when I get to the hospital, you know, they take me into the MRA is what they call it, the CAT scan. And they discovered that my there's blood on my brain. So of course I'm sitting here thinking blood on my brain. And at that point I had, my family had been notified that I was being taken to the emergency room. I called my sister and she showed up in a matter of minutes and she was in the room with me when they told me that. And me being me, I'm thinking all kind of crazy things like, what do you mean blood on my brain? What is this? What does this mean? And I started crying. She started praying. And after that, I really can't recall the last 12 hours after they told me that there was blood on my brain. Um, but it turns out that I had two aneurysms. One was large, one was small. The larger one had burst and started to bleed. And they went in through my groin area with the camera to coil it off. And they took care of both of them at the same time. So at this point, I'm in... I've been transferred from Kaiser, Ontario to Kaiser Fontana. The next thing I remember, I'm being a, I, the nurse was waking me up just to find out if I knew where I was located. And uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, I'm at Kaiser, Ontario. She said, no, sweetheart, you've been transferred to Kaiser Fontana. We just completed surgery. You're in the recovery room. And she was asking me how I felt. And I'm, of course, you know, at this point, I'm like, well, I'm sore. I don't know what's going on. And from there, I just, I was in the hospital for two and a half weeks. Normally I'm supposed to be there for like 21 days from what I was told in the mm -hmm. ICU. So I spent a total of seven days in ICU. I'm the kind of person, I'm not one that can just lay in the bed. So it was getting a little frustrating to me and to the point where I'm like, I got to get out of this bed. So while I was still <laughs> in the ICU unit, I would have them get me out of the bed and put me in a chair. Cause I just couldn't mm -hmm. lay there. And I, I mean, honestly, and this is no shame to anybody who can't get around, but I just can't understand how people can just be complacent and just lay all day. I mean, unless right. you have to, right. but thank right. God I didn't have to, I was able to get up, get in a chair, you know, as long as I had my feet elevated and within like four days, I was using a walker to get around the, like the nurses um, station because again, from what they were telling me that, I'm kind of like, I guess people have been calling me like the miracle person because <laughs> I'm doing things and there she goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. That's all right. She just, she, um, I'm, I'm doing things that most people haven't been able to do after two weeks. So, uh -huh. star. It's all right. That's That's right. right. She hears something. But anyway, I was in the ICU for seven days. And uh -huh, then from uh -huh. there, I went to the main neurology floor, and I was uh -huh. there for another seven days. I think I spent maybe 17 days total in the hospital. Wow. And so, yeah. And, and everyone that would come into my room, even if they were just checking my head, if they were giving me medication, they would keep telling me the same thing. You're like a walking miracle, because most people don't walk away with from this. They, they, they don't even live, or, you know, right. they, most people stroke out. And I've actually read up on the subject. And a lot right. of people go into the hospital and they have like a severe stroke behind this, these yeah. aneurysms. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I say for, as far as I'm concerned, I am totally grateful because I'm walking, I'm talking, I have the activities of my limbs. Um, I might have just every now and then I might have a brain freeze where I can't remember like a certain term, but I know what it right. is. I just can't pull the words out. Right. But like right. I said, for those first 12 hours of me being in the hospital when they before they even did a surgery I have no memory of what happened after they told me that I had the brain in, that, that I had blood on my brain but I remember no I want to say I remember I have proof that I, I must have been okay somehow because I was texting my pastor telling him mm -hmm. to pray and we had like a full blown text conversation but I don't <laughs> remember texting the man but right. I have proof that we were talking now tell me were you also tweeting during that time you know, I don't, I don't know. remember. Okay, I don't remember missing your tweets. I mean, it seemed like if you were not tweeting for two and a half weeks, I'd be like, "Hey, where's she at?" Because I, I usually get used to come to your tweets every day. 
Now, I have been tweeting, maybe just putting little messages out there, but I don't think I was discussing what was going on. There was right, a point right. in time where my father called me after the surgery because he lives in he lives in Chickasaw, Alabama. He was ready to ride, drive out here, pack my stuff, and take me back out there so he could take care of me. But like I said, right, right now I'm still with my aunt and uncle. But I guess I must have posted something on Facebook because he was like, what's going on? What are you putting out on Facebook? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Again, <laughs> I don't remember anything. It got to the point where when they finally took me to the, the neurology unit, mm -hmm. that the head nurse, he would always come into my room and just check on me and see how everything was going. And he was like, eventually, I want you to finish your song. And every day he would say that to me. And I'm thinking, what is he talking about? You know, like, how do you even know I sing? Right. And then when he when they were wheeling me to the to the regular floor, he goes, you don't remember singing to me as you were leaving the um, the surgery unit? I said, what? He goes, yeah, you sang a complete song. You were praising God and just thanking the Lord. I'm like, what? I don't remember any of that. But he said I was singing wow. to him as I'm being wheeled to my room. Mm, so mm, I'm like, mm, well, mm, thank God. <laughs> my God. It's amazing like I said, because... I, it's amazing because I, I've, I've, I've known people, uh, uh, even loved ones who not, who've had aneurysms or who've had many strokes, and some didn't survive. Some had long-term effects and mm -hmm. everything. Uh, but uh, it's amazing how the, the the Bible is true that what's in you comes out. Right. And right. So here you were in a semi-conscious, as far as being cognizant and aware state. But here you were still singing and didn't know you were singing and, and saying <laughs> praise to the God because that's what's in you, you know. And see, and, and the Bible says the Lord will give us, it says, sing unto the Lord a new song. And the yes. Spirit, just like when the Spirit makes intercession for us when we pray, we don't even know what we're praying for. The Spirit was there ministering, not just to you, but ministering to the nurses and the doctors. Man, you weren't yes. even aware. <laughs> Look no. at God. Look at God. Wow. He would come in and tell me every night. Or ask me, when are you going to finish your song? And I'm just so oblivious. I'm like, I don't know what this man, because at one point, I'm like, is he flirting with me? I'm like, and this is not he's flirting with me at this point. But then there was a purpose to what he was saying. And then when he told me that, I was like, well, God, I said, I really got to get back into this thing, because this is what you you gifted me. You anointed me to do mm -hmm. this. And I've been sitting on the anointing, and I got to stop. So, oh. I mean, And I'm just sitting yeah. there like, wow. So... That, it just blew my That's mind because, again, like I said, that that twelve twelve hours that time point, I don't remember anything. But he told me that's what I was doing. I was singing as they were coming out of the surgery room. So, glory be to God. <laughs> well, that that is a blessing. That is a testimony. I mean, how God's grace and God's mercy, because uh, you know, right now we're seeing uh, an uptick in TIA. Uh, met, uh, incidents with the heart and the brain mm -hmm. and the blood clots and yes. and, uh, and they're saying I, I don't know I mean, they're saying it has something to do with some of the stuff that was going on a couple of years ago and all that I don't know but the thing about it is a lot of people have not been surviving young people young people right. in your age bracket my age bracket who've just been having a, some type of a cardiovascular event and they're out of here you and know, they're out of here. So God, God is good. And so in these last couple of minutes, if you will, uh, minister to just somebody who's out there right now who may be sick or may be uh, feeling uh, uh, like, God, what are you going to do with my life or whatever case? And just and just minister to them right now for about a minute or the two and let them know these are your testimony that no matter what happens to you, God can still use you in the midst of everything. Go ahead. Now, are you talking about minister in song or in word? <laughs> in words, and then if you want to go into a little song, that's fine too. Okay. You know, I mean, the only thing that I can say that I, again, I am so grateful to God because this thing could have went a totally different way. Um, like I said, I've read up on the situation, aneurysms. Some people get strokes and they never recover. But I can honestly, truly say that I am grateful to God. That is like my my signature right now, being grateful to God for saving my life, for keeping me. Um, and at this point, any opportunity he affords me to go minister, to talk about this situation, I'm definitely going to do it because I do want to encourage someone to, for them to know God is able. His word is true. And I'm learning even more right now to ask. 
I've, I've never been one that, you know, wanted to ask, you know, Lord, will you, will you do this for me? Will you do that for me? And even though the, the word does say, seeking you shall find, knock and the door will be open, ask and he will answer. I'm learning to ask God for what I need, for the things that I want. And somewhere down in that, in this whole situation, I know I pray God save my life because I know you have more for me to do. And I totally believe that there's more for me to do on this earth. In the spirit realm, it's, it's just more for me to do. And on that note, I'm just going to end it with just a quick verse of Tis So Sweet, which happens to be one of my favorite songs. I love the old 100s. I love the hymnals because I feel like they minister and taking nothing away from what's, you know, from the contemporary music that's out today, but there's something about those hymns that really minister to your soul. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest, upon his promise and to know that it was sent by God. Jesus, oh Jesus, how I love you, how I prove you more and more. Jesus, precious Jesus, I thank you for the grace. I thank you for the grace. I thank you for the grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. You still there? There you go, Pastor. Thank right you here. so much. I'm right here. <laughs> no, I, was let, I was giving it all to you. Let, let the Lord use you. Yeah, tis so you. sweet to trust in Jesus. Let, I, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. I just want to say thank you, and I thank you for the grace. That's all I can say. I thank you for the grace. Yes, yes, yes. yes. To trust Him more. Listen, yes. I'm so glad that this we've had this opportunity to share with you and let others there mm -hmm. listen and hear your testimony because a lot of times people are going through stuff. And they think that they're the only ones going through it. And they think that God has deserted them and mm. God has left them. But I remember something you said that you said you always wanted to live uh, where you could see the mountaintops. Yeah. And so that has to be something that daily you have a reminder that, yea, though I walk through the valley. <laughs> you said, ah, <laughs> hallelujah. Through the valley, through the valley. Because at the end of every valley is a mountaintop experience. Yes. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. And so you, you have the edge on us here in Florida. We don't have no mountains. We just got a couple of hills. So we'll give you that. But listen, <laughs> we're so glad to uh, uh, to have you today on Real News Talk today. And so, again, her uh, Dion's uh, Twitter is at She's Dion Brown. And Dion, give us your other contact information, you, uh, YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, whatever it is, so the people can okay. find you and reach out to you. On Facebook, it's Dion L. Brown. And on Instagram, it's also at She's Dion Brown. And then if you're on TikTok, you can also find me on TikTok at Only Dion Can. So okay. I use my name and everything pretty much. But look me up. Follow me. I'll follow back. And again, I thank you for your time. I thank you for the opportunity to share this. I am truly blessed. Again, I'm truly grateful for life and that more abundantly. I'm glad that God saw fit to save me and keep me. And it's great to Amen. see another day. Amen. 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 Listen, we thank God for you. We're so glad to have you. Those of you who are watching here, don't forget that you can watch us on uh, Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Where uh, the R just look up the RC TV network and you'll see us there. And you'll see this interview along with others. We recently interviewed Pastor Michael Jennings of Alabama. That's the pastor who got uh, arrested for watering his neighbor's uh, yard. So we have the interview with him that is going up sometime this week here on RCTV Network. And also, if you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry, go to Cash App, dollar sign, RCTV Networks with an S, Venmo at Rob Carpenter 2, PayPal, the RCTV Network. And those who have Coinbase, cryptocurrency, 